We talk a lot about making film and video on this channel, but we don't talk so much about watching film, video, TV. With the current restrictions both nationally and globally, we can't really just go down and watch a film at the cinema. Instead, we're watching a lot more films and TV at home. So I thought I'd change things up in this video and actually talk about a bit of home viewing equipment. So I'm gonna talk about one of these, Amazon 200 pound 1080p projectors and ask the question, is it any good? Welcome back to the channel, my name is Sam, and before we start I'd like to remind you all to please subscribe if you haven't already. We upload videos at least once a week on video and film production, music production, photography, gear, and now home viewing equipment. So if you're interested in any of that, please do be sure to subscribe, notifications on to stay updated on our latest videos. So it's been a while since I went to the cinema. Obviously this past year we haven't really been able to go and see films in the cinema or theatre because it's just not safe to do that. But I miss it so much. Now I do have a nice 4K 55 inch TV at home in my room but it's just not the same thing as watching it on a really big projected screen. So I wanted to buy something that we could use in our living room and treat it more as like an event and have a really nice big screen and all sit together and watch a film. Back in 2008, I actually did own a projector. It was an Optima DLP projector. I believe it was the EP720, though you might be fooled in the name. It wasn't actually 720p. It was SVGA resolution, I think 800 by 600 and had VGA, S video composite inputs. And I think it was around about 2000 and Lumens with no built-in speakers. I really enjoyed it for a good few years and it was cool to be the only one of my friends who had a projector. All of them had TVs and I was able to get this massive super-sized screen. But unfortunately, only a couple of years after I bought it, my family started investing in HD 1080p TVs and monitors. So ultimately, I kind of stopped using my projector because despite the fact I was able to get a big image, we had a nice big sort of 42 inch 1080p TV with Blu-ray and my projector just didn't match up to that resolution. So unfortunately I did end up selling, but fast forward to today and I'm once again finding myself wanting to have a projector just to kind of change things up a bit. Now I also wanted to buy one which I could use in the summertime, hopefully, if we're allowed and it's safe to do so, to actually be able to do sort of show films in the garden and take it to friends' houses and actually kind of, you know, set it up and not just have it, you know, mounted to a ceiling and that be that. I also didn't want to spend crazy money. Now, to get a 1080p native projector, you're looking at spending sort of four or five hundred pounds if you want one from Optima, Epson, BenQ, something like that. So when I looked up on Amazon and actually found a lot of these lesser known brands were offering projectors at native 1080p, I was certainly very interested. If you search for 1080p projector on Amazon, you'll get anything valued at 50 pounds to a thousand pounds plus. Obviously the super high end ones are gonna be sort of really good DLP and laser projectors and maybe some three LCD projectors from well-known brands, as I said, Optima, Epson, BenQ, those sorts of brands. And you're gonna get, you know, a really good projector, albeit at quite a hefty cost. Whereas on the bottom end of the spectrum, if you're looking at 50 pound projectors, I can tell you now, they may say 1080p, but actually what that means is that they accept a 1080p signal. Likely their native resolution will only be about 480p, they won't be especially bright, but they might be quite good for sort of, you know, the occasional movie night or for the kids room or something. If you go up to around the 100 pound mark, you start seeing more native 720p and maybe even a few 1080p projectors, and that's when the quality starts to go up a bit, and they're maybe bright enough to use in more ambient light, and they'll produce overall hopefully a better image and the speakers will be better. However, once you hit the 200 pound mark, you start to find a lot of true native 1080p projectors with quite competitive specs and that almost might seem a bit too good to be true. So these are the projectors I want to talk about today and specifically my model is the Wimius native 1080p Wi-Fi and Bluetooth projector. Now firstly when you search up reviews on these Amazon projectors you're going to find mostly two extremes. You'll either find a lot of Amazon reviews and YouTube videos saying how just incredible they are and they don't really talk about a lot of the negatives. They, they kind of gloss over that and they talk about them being like this sort of incredible product you never need to buy anything else. On the flip side you'll also find incredibly cynical reviews on YouTube and also in projector and home cinema enthusiast forums and groups where they basically say they're the worst thing ever, don't touch it with a 10 foot barge pole, ignore it. You do find some actual YouTube videos that are much more balanced and that's kind of what I'm hoping to do today. So it's going to be a review of, of this projector but also hopefully a bit of a guide on similar Amazon projectors at this price. So as I said, this is the Wimius K1. It is true native 1080p, no joke, that is legitimately 
1080p. It's got two HDMI inputs, one line out slash headphone out. It's got a 3.5 mil AV input, and it's also got two USB ports, which I believe are both powered, because I've been able to run my Fire Stick off both of these. This also has built-in 10 watt speakers, which I'll tell you now are surprisingly good, and I'll touch more on those later in the video. The projector also comes with this really surprisingly decent carry case. Also comes with a remote, which is actually very responsive and I've been very impressed with though no batteries included I think that's a common thing with these for some reason they don't include batteries also comes with an HDMI cable always useful a microfiber cleaning cloth and one of these little AV RCA cable adapters as I said it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity for connecting you know phones and Bluetooth devices I will come back to that because being honest that bit is kind of a letdown and a lot of people don't really talk about the fact they're not actually as good as they might seem. So overall design, I'm gonna say I quite like it. It feels surprisingly premium. The actual quality of the materials used certainly feels better than what I would expect at this price. It's got this quite unusual kind of fabric top design and you know real tactile buttons which all work very well. It's got a lens cap, although the stupid thing is that the focus wheel has to be all the way in for it to work. It's a weird design choice. Focus wheel on the side here, no physical keystone, which actually I'll tell you now is a good thing because you don't have to worry about additional glass elements or, or plastic or lens elements getting in the way and sort of interrupting the image and I'll talk more about that a bit later. Now something to mention with these projectors, especially these more affordable projectors, is the way they describe their brightness. If you don't know, most well-known projectors use what is called ANZI or American National Standards Institute lumens. So for instance my old Optima EP720 was around about 2000 ANZI lumens and typically you'll find sort of mid-level projectors range between about 1500 to 3500 Anzai lumens depending on sort of what the model is and, and how much you're paying. However, a lot of these budget projectors will be touting sort of five, six, seven thousand lumens. I can tell you now, that's not the same thing. These lumens, or sometimes referred to as Lux, are not the same as Anzai lumens. Now this Wumi SK-1 was rated at 7,500 lumens, which even for these kind of, I guess I'll say fake lumens, that's quite high. Usually these budget projectors are touting themselves to be anywhere between 5,000 and 7,000 just lumens in this price bracket. So assuming they're using the same their own same scale, this is still on the brighter end. But again, I can't be totally sure. Based on my research and based on what I can tell, I don't have an exact way of measuring, but I reckon this projector sits somewhere between 500 and 1,000 Anzai lumens. Again, I'd have to actually do a proper test, but based on what I've read of other similar projectors and what people measured it to be, it's somewhere in the region of 500 to 1,000. So that's still, that's not terrible. But despite this somewhat arbitrary lumen scale, what actually matters is real world brightness and how it actually is. And I'll say now, it's brighter than you'd expect and the color is better than you'd expect. There are some trade-offs for sure and I'll come to those. But if you're assuming that the image is going to be poor, you will be surprised. But also if you're assuming the image is going to be as good as a thousand or two thousand pound projector, you're also going to be disappointed. So when you look for these projectors, you're likely going to find a number of different models and a lot of brand names you've not really heard of. But you might find one brand and model name and then you might find another one which looks identical and that's probably because it is. So basically these projectors are private label products and if you don't know what private label is effectively you have manufacturers who then license their design and products to companies. Those companies are responsible for adding some branding, marketing, customer support, all that sort of stuff. And because these products are licensed, you will find sometimes that multiple companies have licenses to the same product, but it's named something different. And this Wumi SK-1 is no exception. There are actually three variants that I've come across. This is the only black one, which I thought looked the best. There's also a gray one from a company called Toptro. I think it's called the X1. There is also a white one from a company called Yeba called the V6. As far as I can tell, these are more or less the exact same model with the exact same internals and the exact same firmware. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because the actual product is well made. The quality of these cheaper private label products are actually getting really good. Down the front here I do actually have a portable monitor which I use in my desktop when I'm not traveling at the moment, I can't travel, and that's a private label product and it's been fantastic. Okay I've talked for way too long, we're going to look at the features now and uh, firstly you're greeted by this menu, it's, I think it's like an Android based, uh, pretty sure it's an Android based system and this is one of the better looking menus that I've seen from these projectors. Firstly, the keystone, you've got two options for it. You've got a basic vertical only keystone. It would have been nice to see horizontal as well. And you don't have any kind of optical keystone, which as I said, is much better because you don't have another cheap glass or plastic element in the lens distorting it, which will ultimately cause 
blurriness. You also have a digital zoom feature, which is useful if it's just a little bit too far back because these projectors are cheaper, so they're not going to have an optical zoom built in. So having that digital zoom and just being able to scale it down to sort of 90 or 80% and still keep most of the resolution is useful. It also has this 4D keystone correction, which sounds great in theory, but there's a few caveats. The problem is that you can kind of, you can move each corner independently. So you can end up with a perfect rectangle, but it'll be kind of elongated or squished. I'd probably say the best application for this kind of 4D keystone is if you've got like a 16 by nine screen to project to with actual kind of correct aspect ratio, all you need to do is point the corners into the corners of the screen. But if you've got no form of reference, you're gonna potentially end up with an elongated image. So it would have been nice to see the more basic keystone have horizontal as well. As I mentioned, we've also got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. I'm not really going to show this. Uh, it's for Apple and Android casting. You know, there are videos that show it does work. Problem is, it's typically kind of jumpy from what I've seen. I would just personally rather not play something off my phone wirelessly. I'd always rather wire it in because you're just introducing more potential issues. Uh, such as poor connection, which will just ruin your enjoyment of the film. So I'd recommend doing what I've done and using a Fire Stick or a laptop or a Blu-ray player. Don't rely on the casting if you don't have to. Bluetooth also, as I think I might have mentioned, is just a huge disappointment. Uh, it does connect and it will play, but it just goes out of sync so easily and it is just not watchable. I've tried it on my soundbar, my headphones, don't use it basically. The Bluetooth on the Amazon Fire Stick is great, but the one on this one, if you really want Bluetooth, get an external Bluetooth receiver. Um, otherwise, if you want to connect external speakers, use the line out. And I will talk more about the speakers a bit later on. So when you actually go onto one of the HDMIs, you get some image control. Now this is the biggest disappointment to me. The image control is limited. You've obviously got your brightness, contrast, saturation, whatever, but the hue is grayed out. And I don't know if it's my firmware, but that's kind of annoying. Luckily, I'd say the image is pretty accurate compared to my 4K monitor, my TV, and my laptop, but it's annoying that, you know, I can't sort of change it if I thought there was too much blue or red or green. It's it's annoying you can't do that. I'd also say that the picture presets aren't good. They're all way too sharp, and so on screen, I've actually got my sort of user settings. Brightness is at 55, contrast at 55, which just gives you that little bit more brightness. I will say you might lose a little bit of detail and highlights, but you're probably not gonna notice it. Saturation, I find the image is a bit too desaturated, so I pushed it up to about 60. I found that to be the sweet spot, so you get slightly more vivid colors, but it doesn't end up looking kind of unnatural. And then sharpness all the way down to 30. That was about as high as I could go before you started getting weird kind of outlines from it trying to overly digitally sharpen. So that's the settings I use. I think they work pretty well. So actually having a look at the video now, uh, these are a couple of films that we've shot as phase drive film. I'm quite impressed with how bright it is. Even with the ambient light on, you still get a nice clear image. That 1080p working really, really well. And yeah, for the most part, I'm really impressed. And obviously you get full effect when you turn the lights off, as you will with any projector, but it really comes into its own in, in with lights off and then you really get a nice bright image that isn't also completely overpowering. I'd also say that frame rate, refresh rate is really good. I haven't noticed any kind of weird artifacting with fast moving scenes. It just seems to reproduce a pretty damn accurate image and a surprisingly bright one. Now I will say because it's a cheaper projector, the glass they've used for the lens isn't quite as good as higher end ones. So you might end up with a little bit of color fringing, but it's really nothing too bad unless you go and stand like right next to it. If you have it really offset at like 45 degrees, then you're gonna notice uneven focus, but pointed largely straight on, it should be fine. And I, I found the image to be pretty damn sharp, all things considered. Now I've been using this the past week or so uh, in our living room, which is where we mainly want to set it up. Initially, we started just by using it uh, on the shelf and then just scaling down the image to about 90% to fit sort of more or less perfectly. And it looked, you know, pretty damn great. The picture was impressive. Coming off both Blu-ray and the Fire Stick, I was really impressed in the living room. The image there was around about 100 or so inches and that looked pretty good. However, I wanted to try and actually make the most of the full resolution. So I ended up buying this uh, tripod tray for laptops and projectors from one of my favorite brands, Newer. Um, now I was actually able to buy this because a lot of these companies will offer you either gift cards or free gifts if you provide a review of their product. 
It doesn't outright say that you need to give it four or five stars, but I think the assumption is that you'll give it a good review. I gave it a good review because I thought it deserved it, but while they don't explicitly say you need to give a good review, I don't know if they'd be so inclined to give, you know, a 30 pound Amazon gift card if you don't give them sort of four or five stars. So that's just something to be aware of when you are looking at the reviews. So in some of this footage I'm watching at night and some I'm watching during the day. So during the day, I just had the curtains closed and the blind in the other room was actually open and I was able to see the image pretty damn well. I don't think it shows up on camera as well as I was actually able to see it and enjoy it. So this is quite usable in, I'd say, most ambient light. It's not going to be useful in kind of bright daylight. But yeah, I'd say it's perfectly bright enough to use in, you know, as long as you've got a little bit of darkness and not too much sort of bright light, you'll find this projector works great in I'd say most situations. So the final point on the visual side of things is to talk a little bit about gaming. It's no secret that a lot of these projectors don't have the best response time and this is no exception but it's not as bad as you might be led to believe. Um, I was able to play Minecraft and it felt reasonably good although it kind of felt at times if you've ever played sort of local network streaming via sort of xbox or steam or something you just get a slight bit of input lag which isn't too bad for sort of casual games this would be great for you know playing like nintendo switch like mario kart or something but if you're playing something more competitive like call of duty it's playable and you maybe you will get on with that i don't know but Really, if you need that response time, this isn't the screen for you. I would stick to a good monitor or TV. So lastly, we need to talk about the sound quality. I'm really impressed with the speakers built into this, all things considered. Now, something to mention, you will get fan noise. Of course, you're gonna get fan noise. Being one of the cheaper projectors, you will find the fan noise is probably more than what you get you know, if you paid sort of a couple of hundred pound more, but it's certainly not something that will ruin your enjoyment of anything. And once you've got a film on or a TV show, you're really not going to notice it. The built-in speaker is surprisingly loud. There's enough clarity and definition. And it's got, all things considered, there's enough bass response to actually, you know, be able to enjoy it. Obviously, it's not going to match up to a proper sound system. But I've got to say, the built-in speaker in this one, compared to sort of the reviews I've seen and what I was expecting, it's certainly better than a lot of built-in TV speakers, and I think for the average user, they might not even need to get any external speakers unless that's something that's really important to them. I have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live. However, if you do want to use external speakers, there is a few options. Now, again, I wouldn't use Bluetooth unless you really don't mind things sort of going out of sync. Probably your best option is to use the line out. Now be aware that the line out preamp there isn't really much of a preempt, so you will probably need something to boost the signal. Now, I just used a cheap Behringer mixer, which I had around, and I ran the audio out into the Behringer mixer into my M Audio desktop monitors, which worked pretty well. So something you'll need to be aware of is you might need to occasionally dust the projector. Now this is common of all LCD projectors, which is what this is, although it is a single LCD as opposed to three LCD, but it's not immune to dust and periodically you might need to dust it. So to do that, it's actually not too difficult, although it does mean opening up the projector. And the way to do that is to actually flip the projector and take out the seven screws on the bottom. You carefully need to pry off the lid, watch out for the connecting wire. And then when you get inside, there's a small cover over the LCD and that's where you can just look inside and carefully blow with an air blower. Don't use compressed air because it might leave residue. You can also use sort of dusting swabs, but generally I would stick to using a manual air blower. One thing I really like about these kind of projectors is they're quite easy to get into and actually quite easy to repair. So a lot of modern technology, they kind of use closed systems. They don't want you getting into it and they would rather you just buy a new one. Whereas these ones, a lot of the connectors you use are quite standardized. I believe the exhaust fan is actually just a standard 90 millimeter fan. And there's a teardown video on YouTube and shows just how easy it is to take apart and put back together. So if something went wrong, theoretically you could fix this relatively easily and save yourself some money, which again wins huge points for this. Downside, as I said, you will need to dust this and probably need to dust this a bit more than the higher end LCD projector. And that's just because the dust filtration won't be quite as good as a high end projector. But you don't need to worry that you're gonna have dust all the time. It's just periodically you might need to open it up and give it a good dusting to make sure you haven't got sort of stuff all over your projected image.
Now that actually is a good point. If you're planning on using a universal projector mount and mounting it to the ceiling, that might make it a bit difficult to dust it. So just consider that if you are going to be mounting it permanently, you still might want to sort of take it down and dust it periodically. So make sure it's not so secure you can't take it down. So lastly, I wanted to go over a few FAQs I've seen, you know, on, on various projector listings and in YouTube comments. And one of the questions that's often asked a lot of this type of projector is, can this replace my TV? And the answer is, depends. If you've got an older sort of, I don't know, 30 to 40 inch TV and you want something bigger but don't want to spend lots of money, then this could be a good option. The thing is that you do need to be aware that you'll largely need to watch this with the curtains drawn with the lights off because otherwise, you know, if you're trying to watch it in broad daylight, you're probably not going to see that much. And this is why I kind of like to still use my TV. I like to watch stuff in broad daylight as well as in darkness because, you know, I kind of I like vitamin D. Vitamin D is a nice thing to have. Um, I don't want to be in darkness all the time when I'm watching stuff. But if you're prepared for that, then this could be a possible TV placement option. Second question is, can I use this outside? Well, I haven't personally had the chance to use it outside because I don't have a garden here, but I have seen plenty of pictures and videos of people using similar projectors outside and they seem to run pretty great. Now I will test this come the summer at Elliot's place. We're planning on doing uh, a video on garden cinema and setups and some Things I've noticed that people do, especially with how they kind of light their garden that affects the image. So Ellie and I have got something in the works which we might try and do, uh, assuming it's safe to do so, which will be on a good garden cinema setup using this projector. So the basic answer is it should be usable outside. This should be plenty bright enough for that, assuming it's evening or nighttime. Now the third question is, how does this compare to a high-end cinema projector? Now I don't own one and not a lot of my friends own one. I've seen them a few times and you know, they are pretty damn impressive. And, you know, if you're comparing this to like a one or two thousand pound projector, this is not gonna match up. But if you want to have the home cinema experience on a budget, but actually have good 1080p and you know, good detail, good sharpness, and the image look consistent across the board, because something I didn't mention is the fact that actually I've not noticed any darkening around the edges. It's a pretty evenly lit image. So this could be a really ideal projector for someone who has either only ever owned a really cheap projector, or maybe they had a better projector and, and it's broken and they want to just replace it with something more affordable, or someone who just wants to have that home cinema experience on a budget, this is a really good option. And there are other similar ones out there, you know, do consider those, do your research is the main thing I'd say, look at reviews. My YouTube history is just full of like cheap projector reviews before I settled on this one. Doing your research is the most important thing. I'd say don't be afraid of these, but also be aware of their limitations. You won't find the best colors ever, you won't find the best contrast ever, but you will find a surprisingly enjoyable image. And I'd actually say that this projector, I would have expected to pay 300 maybe even 350 pounds for this your trade-off is that you're not getting something that's maybe quite as bright as like an optima or an epson you're also not necessarily getting the best glass out there but you're actually getting a lot of features that you would have to pay a lot more on a much higher end product to get so would i recommend this yes i would especially if you're looking for something on a budget if you can look past a few of the caveats you'll actually find you're getting a lot of projector for your money now the other option if you're looking for a projector is to look at used but i would always personally choose Used to buy a brand new projector because if anything goes wrong and you know, if it's bought through Amazon then getting a refund or a replacement is pretty easy whereas if you do things through eBay you do have buyer protection but you know you don't necessarily know what you're going to get and you might have issues that don't present themselves until maybe a month or two after. Now for the record I am actually a bit of a quality snob you know I insisted on getting a proper 4k tv when I first got this and I generally prefer to use you know 4k blu-rays and I would choose blu-rays over streaming so I am still a bit of a quality snob but at the same time I do appreciate how good the image is for the price you're paying for it and I'd much rather have a slightly less bright projector that produces a higher resolution more detailed image than pay effectively more for something that's only going to be 720p or even lower. Don't be put off by the fact it's that cheap because a lot of these projectors really are a lot better quality than you might think they are. So I definitely recommend it. Have a look around and, you know, get yourself an affordable cinema setup. It's quite, it's quite enjoyable. So I hope you enjoyed that. I generally kind of stuck more to a positive review, but that's because I genuinely, that's how I feel about it. I think it is better than what some people give it credit for, but you do need to be aware of its drawbacks. So just keep that in mind, do your research, and you know, I think you'll be pretty, pretty content. So we'll have more videos coming at least once a week on, you know, video production, music production, photography, and now, you know, home gear. We're also potentially gonna start talking about hi-fi systems. Our resident sort of sound enthusiast, Elliot, might possibly be doing some videos on stereo setups and hi-fi, 5.1, all that sort of stuff. So look out for that. If you're interested in any of that stuff, please be sure to subscribe with notifications and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.